RC scratch builds are fertile ground for creating bespoke components. In this video, my goal is to create a protective covery for the battery, speed controller, and radio receiver of a minimalist scratch built plane. It uses an 8mm aero shaft as for the boom. The boom extends from the motor mount to the tail by way of a wing platform. The high risk of wet grass landings, well, this needs to be protected. So, the components are also quite tightly packed, so we want a lot of air flowing around them within this protective cover. However, if we just used a constant radius tube, we would have a rather excessively large frontal area. Really, what we want is a uh, cover that more closely follows the components inside. The receiver servo loads a vertical and that sets the height of the aft section. However, I've got a couple of battery choices. For a minimal weight, I've got a 450 milliamp hour three cell. It's short and fat. I think I could probably get away with a series of round sections, but Another alternative, in case that doesn't give me enough power, is a 650 milliampere three cell. It's wider, not quite so tall, so maybe I need oval sections for that. So, out come the calipers, and a sketch begins to take form. The CAD tool of choice here is FreeCAD. When I am warm on it, translating this kind of sketch into something I can 3D print would be relatively straightforward. But the free CAD loft function can be sort of like a Japanese tea ceremony. If you haven't done it recently, it can catch you out. Well, no time like now to record the ritual. So I'm going to open up free CAD with the primitive entities I'm going to be building from already there, but I will show you how to quickly create an ellipse, transform it into position, and then take a collection of primitives and loft them into the form of the cover. So let's have a look inside FreeCAD. Here are the basic components that we've got. Circle, a plane for cutting, several ellipses along the way, and an ellipse to extrude out to become a vent in the top and a cylinder that we're going to use to cut away from. Before we go and do the loft, go into part. And there's this great feature here to create a primitive. So the moment this ellipse um, has these kind of dimensions and I'm going to, in a sense, create a new thing and show you how I got it in that place. So, create primitive, not a plane, but an ellipse, and it asks me for a major and minor, and the major in this case is going to be 23 and the minor will be 19 and I won't bother putting position or a rotation on here I'll just create it and then I'll move it into place so create and there's my new thing so close and now I have ellipse 5. So I click on that and I am going to click on transform. Okay, so to transform, I'm first going to rotate it and I'm going to move it. Now, I can see it's taller than wide, and so I'm also going to need to uh, 
rotate it. This way. Now to get it closer, I'm going to uh, look from the top uh, and get it aligned there. And then I'm going to look from the front. Whoops. Okay, so uh, there we go. And up and over. Go back to the normal view. Okay, so I'm quite close to that. So that's the that's the process of setting up. Um, so I'm going to hide lips five. So um, lofts in FreeCAD can be somewhat uh, pedantic. You create a loft with this option here. And what we're going to do is include in it the circle, the ellipse one, two, three, and four. I then have this list, so I'm going to start from the circle and then move along. It's best to do it in order. Okay, I do ellipse one, two, three, and four. Now, I want to create a solid, and then I say, okay. I'm going to want to, in a sense, hollow this out. And so I need to take my loft. Well, first I need to give it some thickness. So I click on loft and then I click on the thickness. And if I say one millimeter and instead of skin, I'm going to want a pipe. And I want to identify the face in the front that's going to be open. So I'm going to identify that. And if this works all right, then I should get and say done. I then have that kind of device. Okay, so I then go back and I've got a little uh, item here to extrude, and I've also got a cylinder. So I'll show that as well. And those two things, the extrude and the cylinder, I have already put together into an entity called things to cut. So we have a thickness and I want to subtract the cut. I have an item. So I have a restricted front and at the back I have a rib in a sense. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want only the top. Um, so what I have to do is take the cut and our next step is to take the cut and the plane using control, click. I go into this symbol here and I want to choose slice apart. Now watch what happens on the left. I have now have a thing called an exploded slice. And there's a slice one, zero, which is the lower part, and a slice one, which is the upper. So I 
want to hide that. And now I have a covering And slice one, I can now go into file, well, let's save it, and file export, and I want to do it as an STL. And if I was then to go into slicer I could then import now I've proven I can print this I don't actually need any supports but several of the things I can do here is in the print settings I can do it with one parameter solid layers at the top, two is fine, three at the bottom is fine. And for infill, I could do, well, effectively, no infill. And let's put a brim on it so that it stays up properly. And if I slice that, We see it's approximately 12 grams of weight, uses about four meters, and takes a little bit more than an hour to print. And if I zoom in on this a little bit, I can then see what's happening. So this is a one millimeter thick shell that I've created um, so it's just an outer and inner. As we get up and we start bending in, uh, then we get some fills, and there we are. Now, of course, one could go in and um, use the variable height. That, that would give a slightly smoother, um, but it would take longer. So that's the process. Thank <laughs> you.